Good morning, everybody. Bon matin, tout le monde. As we continue to watch the horrors unfold, I want first to begin by saying that I extend my condolences to all of those who have lost loved ones following the terrorist attacks in Israel. The pain and suffering that we continue to bear witness to cannot be measured. Young lives have been cut short, families have been ripped apart, and it is absolutely heartbreaking. It is being felt in homes and communities across Canada. Le Canada condamne sans équivoque l'attaque terroriste du Hamas contre Israël. Nous soutenons Israël et son droit à se défendre conformément au droit international. Nous savons également que le Hamas n'est pas le peuple palestinien. We know that Hamas is not the Palestinian people. They do not represent their aspirations. And they have no other aim but to create chaos and loss. The violence needs to stop. Civilians and the innocent need to be released. And Israeli and Palestinian lives need to be protected. We stand by Israel and its right to defend itself according to international law. We also know that Hamas is not the Palestinian people. It does not represent their aspiration and offers nothing more than more chaos, loss, and heartache. The violence must end, hostages must be released, and civilian lives, Israeli and Palestinians, must be protected. Tragically, in this context of violence, Tragically, in this context of violence some Canadians have, three Canadians have lost their lives. La famille Luc, hier. I spoke with the family of Alexander Luke yesterday, and I must say it was one of the most difficult calls I've ever had to make. My heart is with his family and the families of the others. My thoughts are with their loved ones and their community. May their memory be a blessing. We continue to follow reports of three Canadians who remain missing. We're in contact with their families, providing support, and officials are in contact with local authorities to gather more information. I would like to now speak directly to Canadians who are currently in the region. We're scared. It is a time of great uncertainty and of great anxiety. But I want you to know that we are here for you. We're working around the clock to provide you with the information you need and the support you're asking for. Our office in Tel Aviv and Ramallah are open. Our team is there, and our team in Jordan, Egypt, and Lebanon are also working around the clock to support you. We have surged the capacity in Ottawa to make sure that we're there to answer your calls and texts 24-7. If you haven't registered yet with Global Affairs, please do so now. You can do so on our website or by calling 613-996-8885. Si vous n'êtes pas encore inscrit auprès d'Affaires mondiales Canada, If you have not yet enrolled with Global Affairs Canada, do so now. You can do so by the website or by calling 613-996-8885. I know that the situation has been difficult and many of you want to return to your family, to home, and want to do so safely and we will help you. We'll begin the assisted departure of Canadians from Tel Aviv in the coming days, by the end of the week, with the help of aircraft from the Canadian Armed Forces. They will arrive in Tel Aviv and bring Canadians to Athens. My colleague, Pablo Rodriguez, and I have been working on the next steps from there. Together, we have secured, with Air Canada, a plane and a crew to bring Canadians home from Athens. These flights will be available to Canadian citizens, their spouses, and their children, as well as to Canadian permanent residents, their spouses, and their children. Let me be clear, this includes dual nationals, because a Canadian is a Canadian is a Canadian. We're also working on additional options for those who cannot reach the airport in Tel Aviv, and I'll be able to take questions on this. Additional details will continue to be shared over the coming days. I will continue to share them publicly and will also communicate them directly to those who wish to receive the assistance. If you would like our help in leaving and have not registered yet with Global Affairs Canada, please do so now. This is how you will be able to get information on how to leave and we will share information directly with you once you're registered. 
Je vais maintenant prendre un peu de recul et faire un point sur l'état d'avancement de notre réponse diplomatique à cette crise. An update on our diplomatic response to the crisis. Oh, for the weekend, I spoke with my counterparts in Israel, the Palestinian authorities, as well as Egypt, Jordan, and the White House. Okay, we've been listening into Foreign Affairs Minister Melanie Jolie, Israel, and other stakeholders in the area, in particular Jordan. We will continue to offer humanitarian assistance to civilians because civilians are civilians. Vous allez vous y prendre et peut-être aussi. Are you going to try to get out any Canadians in Gaza? And if so, how will you do so? La possibilité d'avoir des otages canadiens. And could you talk about the possibility of there being Canadian hostages? Je répondrai à la Last suite. part of your question euh, first. Niveau, euh, des otages, bien entendu, je When it comes to hostages, I cannot confirm if Canada has any hostages because I do not want to increase the value of those hostages and endanger their lives. But I can tell you that we've been in contact with the chief negotiator in Israel. We will be sending a group of experts to support him and his team. Quant à la question de l'évacuation, as regards the question about the evacuation, we are examining different options, especially for those who are in the West Bank. We've been in touch with Jordan, and I had uh, discussions yesterday with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Jordan to see how we could work together to bring up some commercial options once Canadians reach Jordan. So that's the first thing when it comes to Gaza. We will be working with the UN to see what might be possible in the coming days. And that was the same case in the past when Canada has had to intervene in evacuations of Canadians from abroad. Good morning. Um, I was just wondering, um, does uh, Canada have an idea of how many Canadians are in Gaza specifically and are there efforts to get them out? So. This was the question I was just answering in French, um, but um, two things. We have around 500 people that have registered with Global Affairs Canada, not only in Gaza, but also in the West Bank. So I don't have the information directly uh, right now regarding Gaza per se. Uh, what I can tell you also is that uh, should the uh, United Nations work on an evacuation, we would be working with them. We've done so in the past, uh, but uh, at this point there has been uh, no um, uh, information coming from the UN regarding evacuation as we speak. But we keep uh, our options open. And uh, as for the West Bank per se, uh, we are looking at options through Jordan. I've been in contact with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Jordan. And once Canadians would be in Jordan, then they would have access to commercial flights. And I've been in contact with commercial uh, airlines as well to be able to do that. Right. And yeah, this question uh, may be better suited for uh, General Air. Um, what can you tell us about the timing of these flights? Of course, the attacks happened Saturday morning. People quickly went into hiding. It's Wednesday now. We're hearing that these flights uh, should be arriving uh, by the end of the week. So what can you tell us about um, you know, that timeline on from Saturday to potentially Friday before we're seeing uh, flights uh, taking Canadians out? I'll, you know, and Wayne can, can answer, but... Um, I knew you would be asking that question uh, because this is a question that um, is 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 we are in a situation right now where usually when there are still commercial flights we don't do assisted departure. This is quite rare. Um, you know we have uh, the experience even in Sudan where uh, we all worked together six months ago to evacuate Canadians, but there were no uh, commercial flights left. But as um, people were seeing their flights going to Canada cancelled or indefinitely delayed, we had to step up and take a decision to do so. And that's why we decided to work with the Canadian Armed Forces and also uh, with Air Canada. Um, but um, also, I think it's important that uh, Canadians know that when they're in a part, parts of the world where uh, conflict uh, uh, happens, well, we're there to help. Um, but I think that Wayne can provide more information based. 
Uh, no, that's a, that's exactly it. So Ben Gurion Airport is still open for commercial traffic. Um, we got the request, the formal request yesterday, but uh, once this. Uh, uh, once this conflict started, uh, we immediately started planning, uh, developing options, taking a look at uh, the possibilities of what support we could provide. Uh, so there's been a tremendous amount of concurrent activity ongoing as this situation has unfolded. Okay. Maybe I, would, I would just add also, um, it became clear over a number of days that Canadians needed our assistance getting out. So we were having increased calls to our emergency watch and response center. Um, and it was clear that commercial flights were getting harder and harder to access. Thanks. And I also wonder, General Air, maybe you could speak to this. What the Canadian military isn't exactly awash with extra resources. What are you canceling to be able to do these flights? So both uh, great questions. So firstly, we are uh, committing two CC-150 Airbuses uh, to this. In fact, the first one will be landing in Athens uh, in the next hour or several hours. Um, and we'll be doing a shuttle uh, between um, Ben Gurion Airport and Athens. Um, we're doing a tabletop exercise later today with all the partners involved, Global Affairs, IRCC, to work out the, uh, the most effective and efficient way of doing this to make sure that we've got the flow. That will determine the, um, the, the, the number of flights that we do per day. Uh, it'll be demand driven, uh, how many people are asking to, to get out. And so those details will uh, evolve over the course of the next few hours. Yeah, there is, uh, to your second question, there is an opportunity cost uh, to this, uh, but no mission is more important than protecting uh, Canadians here at home or overseas. You want to add, Judy, to that? I, I would just say that we we are uh, ramping up our resources in the region through our standing rapid deployment team. So we are sending uh, folks from Europe uh, who are at our missions in Europe into Tel Aviv and into Athens to support this operation. Thanks. And if I can add to that, I had many conversations with the CEO of Air Canada yesterday along with my colleague Pablo Rodriguez. And so that's why since Air Canada has a, a hub, in Athens, that's why we will be running uh, uh, through Athens uh, this this operation. Marika Walsh, uh, Globe and Mail. Good morning. Uh, thanks for Hi, taking Marika. our questions. Um, just um, on on two things that you've already talked about. Uh, first of all, we're hearing from Canadians that haven't been getting anything other than auto responses from the federal government that had their phones ring off the hook at the embassy all weekend with no response um, and were given auto replies from the federal government with suggestions such as don't travel to Israel when they're already there. So why was the response so sort of scattered and patchwork maybe if others were getting through? And what's your message to Canadians who decide to stay in Israel beyond this week? Is this sort of the only chance they're getting for a Canadian government flight? Mm -hmm. or? is more available later if they decide to get out later on? Mm -hmm. So uh, first and foremost, we will act and take decisions based on the number of Canadians that have registered. So that's why I've been giving the phone number so many times, because this will have an impact on how many flights will be available. Uh, but at one point, government flights will be over, and Canadians will have then to take the decisions on what will happen next. Uh, so we're offering this option, and we're looking at the option through Jordan as well. But these will be the options that will be available in the next days, and then Canadians take their decision. Um, we don't have uh, an evaluation of how many Canadians usually are in the country, because they're not obliged to register with uh, uh, Global Affairs Canada. It is a voluntary system. So that's why when people are registered, then they get information from consular services. And they've been, they, they've been able to have access to information since the weekend from the moment they've been registered. The, um, there, is been, there, there has been a surge of asks, of demands, uh, because of the situation that took everybody by surprise on Saturday. Um, and that's why quickly we reacted. And the team 
in Israel needed support, and that's why the embassy in Egypt, in Jordan, and Lebanon, and also, of course, the office here in Ottawa, stepped up and helped. Uh, the embassy, contrary to what certain people were saying, was open on Thanksgiving, and it had also some interruption over the weekend based on what was happening on the ground, and that was a similar situation as what the UK embassy did, the, um, the uh, German embassy, and also the Swedish embassy did. So we were working along with allies and also looking at where the Canadian embassy is located in Tel Aviv. Now, Merke, I know that people are, are scared. Nobody knew this would happen. This is a, a, one of the worst terrorist attack in, in Israel's history. So that's why we're presenting options today. Uh, and that's why our consular services have been 24-7 at this. So maybe, Julie, you can add to that? Yeah, I would just add that. Um, so our emergency watch and response center is staffed 24-7. Um, there are there have been no delays in terms of calling and answering, getting uh, responses. This, there has been a surge in the last 24 hours, so people are waiting a couple minutes on hold. Um, but on those calls, we're taking all the information we need um, in terms of asking people if they require help, if they need, uh, would like to be considered for an assisted departure. Um, we are also um, going back uh, to the list of people who have called us right now uh, and asking for additional information if we don't have it. Uh, to ensure that uh, we're able to support them. Um, in terms of the, the message that went out, we, we did update our travel advice on the weekend and agree that is focused on people um, to sort of um, give them information uh, to allow them to make decisions about their, their own travel. Um, it was uh, it shifted to a, a um, only essential travel to Israel over the weekend, um, but we also had a lot of information about regional issues that would have been relevant to individuals in Israel as well. So it's it's a mix. It's uh, it's for both those traveling to and those who are already there in the country. Thanks. Thank you. And, and Mr. Jolie, as a follow-up, mm -hmm. um, Anthony Blinken is heading to Israel. Are you planning a similar trip? And is Canada planning any sanctions or any sort of response on its own in response to Hamas's attack? So uh, I've been in contact with the White House yesterday, and I've been in contact with many uh, important players in the region, uh, and I'll continue to do so, and I'll have more to say in the coming hours on this issue. You know, there, I'm a busy question. woman, Mary Kay. On, on sanctions or, or on a trip? Which so, one is that? So on all of these subjects, I'm working 24-7 on this. Meanwhile, there's so many issues happening in the world and trying to address all of these. Uh, but my goal right now is to make sure that this assisted departure is well done. And I'm happy to be here because I'm able to be in the presence of Wayne and Julie, and we're able to work together. So that's my first uh, priority. And second, my second priority is really to help. Um, I'm working with partners to de-escalate, because I'm concerned about what's going on in the region. I'm concerned that this could be a second front to uh, what is happening in the world, as we are also dealing with Ukraine, which is our first front. And so uh, that's why I've been uh, talking to many, many of my colleagues and been uh, in contact with them every hour. Kate McKenna, CBC. Minister Julie, uh, off the top of your remarks, you updated the list of numbers of people dead and missing. I'm just wondering if you're able to confirm the death of uh, Adi Clapin uh, in Ottawa and if anyone from the federal government has been in touch with that family. So I can't confirm. Uh, at this point, um, and uh, that's the only thing I can say. What I can say is there's been two dead and three piece people missing. So that's the information that I have right now. Um, and of course, we always uh, are in contact. Usually in these circumstances, we are in contact with families and want to make sure that families are con contacted first and, uh, and they decide whether they confirm so that's the information I have. Maybe you want to add something on that, Julie? I would, I would just say right now we have one presumed death 
And we have, um, just to correct yeah. there, we do have um, uh, two confirmed deaths, but we we need to be in contact with the families before we can release those names. Sorry, Thank you. And one, one presumed. presumed, yeah. And three missing? Yes. Yes. Oui, vous, en français aussi, s'il vous plaît. Donc, yeah. on a deux décès qui sont confirmés, un qui est présumé, one et presumed trois death. personnes qui sont manquantes, qui manquent. And three la... missing people. I'm sorry, what does, that, what does that mean, presumed versus confirmed? So, we need to have authorities confirm uh, that we uh, that a person has died so they they do that through um identification and uh, that can be quite complex uh given the scale of some of the uh some of the uh the the attacks so uh we're working with israeli authorities to confirm all of all of um what we suspect are our deaths judy can you just explain how it works that way people will understand what's the process. Yeah, so um, in terms of we will be notified um, through uh, actually our emergency watch center. Um, often families or friends will call us when they suspect uh, someone has been injured or killed. We then work with our mission uh, in Israel, so in Tel Aviv. They reach out to Israeli authorities, and from that uh, discussion, we work with Israeli authorities to confirm the deaths. Uh, and in this in this case, it's they've been quite overwhelmed, so it's taken some time. Um, but as I mentioned, we have two confirmed deaths and one presumed death. Um, we will be able to come back with uh, with more information at the technical briefing later today. Thanks. Uh, Annie Bergeron, Oliver, CTV. Uh, in your opening remarks, you mentioned that Canada is going to be sending a team of negotiators to help with the hostages. Can you go into more detail about how many people are going and what exactly this team will be? Well, we can provide um, details at the technical briefing a bit later today. The Americans are confirming that there are American hostages being held by Hamas. Why won't you confirm that, especially if Canada is sending a team to help with hostage negotiation? Are there Canadians being held hostage by Hamas? So the latest I have from the Americans is um, they say they're missing. They haven't confirmed. The administration has not confirmed per se. Uh, why? Because this is a, a standing approach we take which in any uh, hostage negotiation we don't confirm. Why? Because we don't want to increase uh, the value of that person in the eyes of, um, of um, their tyrants. And, and at the same time, we want to make sure that we do everything in our possibility uh, to uh, protect these lives and don't increase the danger. So this is common practice. And it's based also on, on past experience. Biden, Biden has confirmed that there are two Americans being held hostage. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm just giving you the latest before this morning. I was, it was based on the information I had from Jay Sullivan and his team. So, uh, but what I'm telling you is this is the approach that we will be taking. Uh, Dylan Robertson, uh, CP. Uh, hi there, uh, Miss Sunday. Uh, I'm wondering how many Canadians, uh, the individuals that have reached out for consular assistance, specifically in Gaza, if you could sort of take the number, not just one as a family, but the number of individuals we're looking at, if you are able to give an estimate of how many of those registered within the West Bank and Gaza, of how many of those are in Gaza that you suspect, and if you have any sort of estimate for the total global number of Canadians within Gaza. So the three part is sort of the number that you think are there, the number that have asked for aid, and the number of those registered that you suspect are within Gaza. So in terms of this specific number, I, I don't have that number for you right now, but I can contextualize it by saying out of the 400, you know, and 70 ROCA registrants we have, so it's a smaller number than we have in Israel. We know we do have people who are impacted in the West Bank and, and in Gaza, to a much smaller extent in Gaza, but there are Canadians in Gaza. A question for all three. What preparations are being made for a possible Lebanon evacuation? Is anything underway in case that situation starts spiraling out of control? So uh, we are already in contact uh, 
the three of us and, and, and our teams on the question of Lebanon. But right now, the most important thing is that we call on de-escalation. My goal is to be in contact with Lebanese uh, officials later today, uh, and I won't speculate on that. We have one, la one last question in the room. Uh, Shannon Proudfoot, Global Mail. Thank you. Um, when one of my colleagues asked sort of what you said was the inevitable question about why has this taken so long, uh, you know, why are we here on Wednesday, um, you took that question, Minister, mm -hmm. before General Eyre. Um, those are the kind of questions we always ask, and I know it often makes you guys feel impatient and frustrated, but I wondered if you could give us a bit of the texture or detail of the kinds of things that have to swing into motion or the considerations that have to be made before you can actually move in a situation like mm -hmm. this? Because I think those are fair questions. Why does it take so long? But I think there's probably an interesting answer about why it does. <laughs> um, I think that um, we live in a world where people think that things can happen just like this. Um, and clearly, you referred to the question of being impatient. I'm an impatient person by nature. And Julie and Wayne knows this. I like to push for things to happen. Um, and it is important that they happened. Now, um, we got the confirmation from Air Canada that they wouldn't fly over Israel quite late. Um, and at the same time, um, we uh, were working with Air Canada to find a solution to be able to get people out. And so um, we were also looking at what other countries were doing. The US is not doing an assisted departure. The UK is not doing an assisted departure. Germany is not doing an assisted departure. So when we announced last, yesterday night that we would be doing one, we were the first of the five eyes to announce. And during the night, Australia announced and actually worked with us to see what they could do. So um, there is definitely an expectation on the part of Canadians for the government to do this, and that's why we are doing it, because we're, call, we're hearing their call uh, for help, because also there's no commercial options directly going to Canada. But we wanted to make sure that we would be in front of you to be able to answer your tough questions with all the details. And that's why we decided to wait a bit, you know, the night. Uh, before uh, being in front of the press and, uh, and, and finalize all the different issues. Um, we had different options out of Cyprus and Athens, and we decided to work with Air Canada out of Athens, and that was uh, finalized over, uh, over the night. So maybe, Wayne, you want to add to that? Yeah, I'll add some planning factors that are always considered when we look at something like this. So firstly, what is the demand signal? Uh, so are people actually asking to get out? Secondly, um, what is the security situation? Can we get in there? Uh, thirdly, what is the asset availability? So what, what resources do we have and where are they? And, uh, um, and how quickly can we get them there? Uh, there's, there are um, issues with or factors with respect to overflight clearances, uh, diplomatic clearances for landings, landing slots, uh, et cetera. What our allies are doing, as Minister Jolie mentioned, um, are, are we able to do this as part of a larger partnership? Um, and then what presence do we have in the region that can help us as well? Uh, and so all of those factors have played in this one. They played into Sudan. They played into uh, the evacuation out of Afghanistan. And we continue, And there's going to be more in the future as the world security situation continues to uh, deteriorate. You know, I've been Minister of Foreign Affairs for now two years, and it's my second, it's our second value, uh, assisted departure in six months. This is rare, but we now know, and we were just talking, the three of us, before this press conference, we'll have to uh, be ready to do more, because the world is getting much more of a difficult place to live in. We are living in an international security crisis, and with this Middle East co uh, conflict that have, has just started, uh, we know that we have to be ready. Uh, and that's why also the travel advisories that Global Affairs Canada uh, does and, and, you know, supported also by Julie's work is really important because Canadians need to know when they go to a region what are the risks that are linked to being in that region. But that being said, today is about offering support to Canadians in need, and that's absolutely what we'll do, and that's my first priority. 
Aïe, aïe, aïe. <rire> Essentiellement, c'est savoir pourquoi ça prend du temps. Oui, Et peut-être revenir aussi Why sur la question de quand est-ce que vous allez commencer. Et peut-être revenir aussi sur la question de quand est-ce que vous allez commencer. C'est bon, Valérie. Vous allez commencer. Bien, c'est sûr qu'on vit dans une crise de sécurité internationale. We are experiencing an international security uh, crisis at the moment. Uh, de différents aléas qu'on doit prendre en, cons- en considération. This means that there are many different challenges that we need to take into consideration when making decisions um, with respect to assisted departures. Une, une opération de la sorte lorsqu'il y a encore First of all, it's des, rare that we would do an operation such as this when there are still commercial que, flights. Uh, finalement, ça soit clair car Canada it took some time for it to become clear that uh, Air Canada was not going to fly into Tel Aviv. There were many cancellations and delays in their flights. And it took some time to get confirmation from them. At the same time, there were other airlines that were continuing to fly. But because there were so many requests for departures that were coming up, then we found ourselves with a long list of Canadians who were unable to leave Tel Aviv or unable to leave Israel safely. This is why we made the decision to take action. Under the circumstances, We've been working with the Canadian Armed Forces to help with the organization of the operation, and General Air can talk about the details. And we did also work with Consular Affairs Canada. Many calls were made. I spoke with Pablo Rodriguez, the president of Air Canada, as well, yesterday. Uh, uh, à partir de Athènes, des vols, and uh, we discussed uh, Air Canada, arranging Air flights Canada, out of Athens uh, with Air Canada. Uh, Air Canada does have a uh, hub in Athens très, très, um, uh, à partir d'Athènes. and uh, is highly organized out of Athens. Avec, uh, I also had conversations très, with très, the très, Israeli très Minister of Foreign Affairs, who is very, very concerned, as you might lui, understand. It was quite late for him last night, à, and he authorized à, us à, to be able to send a Canadian a military à aircraft à at the Donc, Tel Aviv voilà, airport. So that's just to give you some of the context of how it came to be. And you're the first among the Five Eyes? Yes, that's right. We were the first of the Five Eyes to announce that we would be doing those departures. Over the night, then, Australia announced that they would do the same, and they've been in touch with us to see how they can work together with us. Americans at this time are not doing assisted departures. Neither is the UK or Germany. At the armed forces, we have to consider several factors and several components for our planning. Uh, and we also have to assess the scale uh, of need. Uh, we need to look at the security uh, situation, uh, availability uh, of our resources, uh, such uh, as uh, airplanes. Uh, uh, where those airplanes uh, are in the world, as well as uh, diplomatic uh, approval. Alliés, um, we also need to consider our allies' activities. Uh, we know that our presence in the region... Uh, um, hi again. I'm taking the follow-up for my colleague Shannon. Um, General Air, I, I just want to ask you on a separate story. The courts dropped the charges against uh, General Kadia yesterday, citing in large part the military police's nine-month delay in handing over files for the delay. How do you respond to that when now uh, the military justice system seems to be failing both the accused and complainants? So I have been completely consumed in the issue that we're talking about at this press conference, and I've had no time uh, to be briefed on it or to ask any follow-on questions or indeed to reflect on it. So I don't have an answer for you at this point. That were dropped in the last six months. So you know, same thing. Uh, we're we're here to talk about the evacuation from uh, from Israel, and I've uh, I need to get briefed in more detail on this. C'est ce qui met fin à la conférence de presse. Merci tout le monde. Merci.